Hey guys, how you doing? It's Joe Doyle here, and I'm gonna read, in this video, I'm gonna read you um, some parts of chapter two from my Tradesman Survival Guide book. The Tradesman Survival Guide book, is, 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 it's my mission to have that on the, the dashboard of every tradesman's van in the country, because this is everything that you need in order, <clears throat> in order to make sure that you can grow your business and not have your time wasted, um, by not making profits, by losing money and having all those things go wrong in business that we we as tradesmen know um, happens all too frequently. So um, this is chapter two of the book and this is called The Inquiry Book. So I'm going to read it. I'm going to read a good bit of it to you here. Um, as a small operator, we need to understand the method that all businesses use to generate profit is either one or all of the following or a combination of them all. They sell their own labor, they sell the labor of their staff, they sell the products made with their staff, they sell the products they brought in in order to sell at a higher profit. So they either sell the products they bought or they sell the products they made, okay? If you're running a micro enterprise, so a micro enterprise would be see anybody with like 10 staff or less. If you're running a micro enterprise, you need to be very aware that a good portion of the profits made by your company will come from you selling your own personal labor, or else you selling the labor of your staff of which you must spend your own personal time supervising these staff to ensure that their work is done correctly. So as, a, as, the, as the owner of a micro enterprise, you're either selling your own labor, um, you're either, or else if you're not selling your own labor, you're spending your own time watching the staff whose labor you are selling. Well, all of this taken into consideration, you must be very aware that one of the most important commodities you have and of which you must safeguard very tightly is your own time. There is an attitude among the, among the general public that they can just call up a builder or a tradesman and ask him for a quote. The tradesman must then drive across the city and incur fuel costs, toll bridges, and not to mention the fact that he's not doing any work in the time he has allocated to meet the client. This is the normal attitude that the general public hold and it's not really up to us to change it because if we get our act together and make sure these guys are not wasting our time, you can bet your life there will be a long list of tradesmen who will still come behind you and allow this to happen. So basically, it's, it's, it's out there in society that you can just ring a tradesman up and ask him for a quote and he has to drive over to you and spend all his own time, money and effort, well obviously of course you spend his own time, but spend his own money, um, fuel, everything else, go, let alone then do the quote, and in some cases he may not even have the chance of getting the job. To make sure, and even if you, if you do something to change that, there'll be so many other bleeding idiots behind you that will just allow it to happen anyways, right? So, to make sure you're not one of these guys, you must understand that there needs to be a process for every aspect of your business, as without a process, you just follow whichever way the wind blows and you'll end up going with the flow. And as they say, the only thing that goes with the flow is a dead fish. So we're gonna make sure from the absolute outset that we don't end up going with the flow and we have a proper system to help us out each step of the way. Today, we are gonna introduce you to the inquiry book. The inquiry book is a simple Word document that you can print off and have stapled together or bound together and then leave this on the dashboard of your van. Um, you can get a copy of the inquiry book by going to my website, joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG, and you can pre-order your Tradesman Survival Guide there. So here's how we're gonna structure all calls and inquiries for new business. So what we're doing here, guys, is we're talking about preventing people from wasting your time. That is the most important thing we're doing here. We're preventing people from wasting your time. So. Here's how we're going to structure the calls, uh, all calls and inquiries for new business. Either the prospect calls you up directly or they send you on their number for you to call them back. Normally nowadays they send you on the number, okay? Uh, when you get on the phone, and now be very careful on this guys, because even if, if you, even if you don't get the book and you, you take this on board, this is gonna help you big time. Um, when you get on the phone, this is the first thing you say to them. Let me just walk out to the van where it is a little bit quieter and I can get my book to take some notes. The book you're talking about here is your inquiry book, okay? Now, when you download your inquiry book, you will see the questions listed in order for you to ask the client. Um, and here's the magical piece. 
there's a reason for asking each of these questions in the order they are listed. I will highlight the reason for asking each question under the actual question. So, you've, you've took the call, you told them you're walking out to your van you're to get your book, you've got your book, your pen. Um, first thing you write down is the date of the call. Then you ask them for their name, then you ask them for the phone number, then you ask them for the email address and their postal address. So you get all that information and that's for your own records and file management and also if you want to follow up de down the line. The next question we ask them is, can you give me a brief description of what you need? We ask this question to obviously get an idea as to what they want done, but just as importantly here, we need to know where in the, the procurement process the client is. If they're quite vague with the details, you will know that this inquiry may not be as hot as you first imagined, or may not be as hot as they are leading you to believe. This is a great question to read between the lines. So, you know, if you're someone's ringing you for a kitchen, someone's ringing you for a, a boiler replacement, someone's ringing you for an extension, you name it, right? But just asking them to give you a description of what they need, depending on how detailed they are with the description, will let you know whereabouts in the process they are. Now, if it's a gas boiler, they probably don't have too much time to wait around. If it's a kitchen, they probably want to done sooner rather than later. If it's an extension, it might be a little bit further out. But you need to gauge here, right? Because there's no point in you running across the city if, to meet them right away if this job is not urgent. Next question is, do you know when you would like to get the job done? As I said, there's no point in dropping everything and running across the city if they don't want the job done for a few months down the line. Question number eight. Where did you get my number from? Super important question to ask in order to identify where the call originated from. If they got your number from Google, chances are the lead would not be as hot as if they said they got your number from their sister who you just finished the job for. Okay? Here, now, we're going to get into questions where uh, people never really ask. Okay? Can I ask how many people will be quoting for the job? Just ask this and generally the clients will tell you. You have a right to know if you're going to be one of ten quotes. Okay? Have you got your other quotes back in already? Now, we need to know where in the procurement process the clients already are. And my advice is to always be either the first quote back or the last quote back. If they tell you they're still waiting on a number of quotes to come back from the other people who quoted, you need to tell them to call you back when they get their last quote as you will be issuing them with your quote the following day. As it normally takes five days for a quote, but you're issuing quotes every day now due to being so busy. So basically tell them, look, when you get your last quote back, give me a ring, I'll have my one for you the next day, right? You want to be there last, right? Um, this is going to put you in a good light by telling them the quotes are normally five days, but because you're busy, you're doing quotes every day now. But this is going to put you in a good light because builders and tradesmen are very slow to get back with a quote. And if you promise them a fast turnaround and deliver on it, they will remember it and it could improve your chances of winning the job. So almost nobody gets back to the client with the quote on the day they've, they've told them that they'll get back. And if you're going to tell them I'll have for you in the next day and you actually have for them the next day, you're in the minority. Now, listen very, very carefully here. This, this one piece will change your life. we got an angle grinder or something going on over there now. Um, it's the tradesman survival guide. We can't complain about construction going on in the background. Okay, question 11. This is what you're saying to them on the phone here now and you're saying this in a, in a conversational tone. When I get to you on the day, I can give you a handwritten quotation while I'm there, or if you prefer a printed quotation to give to a bank or credit union, that will take an extra five days, right? Now, really what you're asking there for, let, let, me, let, me, let me read this word for word. Remember when I said to you at the start of the chapter that we need to be able to read between the lines. If you ask this question exactly word for word, the clients will tell you either yes, they need a printed quotation, in which case you know they won't have the money and they're still in the process of arranging the finance. Or if they're not seeking finance, they will be only proud enough to tell you they don't need to be borrowing the money and they have it there already. So you're figuring out if they have the money or not. Those are the four set of questions on the, on the inquiry book. When you download your own copy, you will see that they're easy to follow. The second, part, the second part of the inquiry book is the follow up page and we'll go on to that now. And for you to get a copy of your inquiry book, go to joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG for Tradesman Survival Guide and pre-order the book and you'll be able to get all these templates there. Now, the inquiry book part two 
which is the follow-up. This is a handy little tool to follow up with your inquiries again. It's important to ask the questions exactly as they are worded. The worst thing you could do here is call the clients and say, hey, am I getting that job or what? If you ask that question, or even if you ask that type of question, you simply run the risk of the client being able to say no, and that's it. You're out of the running, and it could be difficult to engage in further conversations with the client. So here's how the conversation would go. And if you're not as good on the phone as you'd like to be, or if you're not as good on the phone as, as me and my team were because we trained so much for it, um, you just need to read. Read the questions. You don't need to think to read through it, right? Hi there, just following up on the quotation we issued. Um, we issued you, have you got all your quotations back? Now, that's the question you're asking. The reason, right? The reason we ask this question is to, is to prompt a response, either negative or positive from the client, about the other people quoting for the job. You can collect this data for possible use later on in the negotiations, and if they told you they're pissed off about something, well, you know that you better not allow yourself to make the same mistake as one of the competitors has made. So, hey, have you got all your quotations back? Oh, Jesus, builders or this or that. You know, you're just, you're gauging them, right? Next question we ask. So you take their feedback, you make an over. Next question. Where did our price sit in comparison to other prices received? I'll say we didn't ask them, are we cheap? You know, are they gone with us for avoiding that? Where did our price sit in comparison to other prices received? We asked this question to obviously find out where we sit, but also to gauge the client's attitude to you, A, being the most expensive, or B, being in the middle. Never be the cheapest, no matter what. If your price is the cheapest all the time, you will attract a type of client who will be looking for the cheapest at all times. And trust me when I tell you this, they will break your heart. If, you're continually, if you continually get told that you are the cheapest, you need to increase your prices starting today. Nobody wants to be dealing with the cheapest person all the time, right? Because if something goes amiss, they're like, ah, we should have known that, right? I'm just hoping to God you can't hear that rock breaker going off in the background here. Um, next question. And again, this is the follow-up part of the inquiry book, okay? Um, beautiful question. So they've told you where, they've told you how many of the quotes they've got back. They've told you where your price sits in comparison to some of the other prices. And the next question is, what additional information can I get you to help you out with your decision? So we want, to be appear, we want to appear helpful to the client at all times and notice that we did not say, do you need any further information to help you out with your decision? Because if we ask this question, the client will be able to say no and the conversation goes cold. So simply ask, what, inform, what additional information can I get you to help you out? So you're calling the client up, which most of your competitors will not have done, and now you're asking them what you can do to help them out. This will make your company stand out, and just as importantly, it will make you stand out as a helpful and easy person to get along with. Remember, in all small businesses, and probably just all businesses, even big or small, people like dealing with people. Simple as that, right? Now, the last question, I think it's the last question. The last question that you're gonna ask here is, okay, that's great. On what date, on what date do you intend to make a decision as to who you will be going with for the job? On what date do you intend to make a decision as to who you'll be going with in the job, right? Uh, going with for the job. So you're not pushing them, you're just asking, when do you intend to make a decision? We ask this question so that they do not so that we do not need to ask them on the phone if they're going to give us the job. But by just asking this question, it generally generally leads to the client volunteering some information that they may not be willing to offer you if you simply ask them, hey, am I getting the job, right? So let me say that to you again, right? So we ask this question so that they do not, so that we do not need to ask them on the phone if they're gonna give us the job. But by asking this question, it generally leads the client into volunteering some information to us that they may not have been willing to offer if we just said, hey, are we getting the job? It's so, it's so important to understand that the reason we are asking these questions is to A, hopefully move them along the sales process, and secondly, and probably just as important, is to collect the data from all the engagements with the client so as to help us improve our process and systems that will drive up our success rate in the future. So if we say, when do you intend to make a decision? You know, can I ask what date you intend to make a decision on this? 
most times they would say, well, we kind of have our mind made up. We're probably going to give you the job or the stand between you and one other person. They will volunteer information to you. So you ask questions that are open-ended and you don't ask questions that the client can come back and say a specific no. Because if they do, conversation goes cold and it's, it's difficult then. And you don't want to make the client feel uncomfortable. You want to make the, the, the client needs to have felt comfortable dealing with you along every step of the way. Now, you finish your conversation with your client, here's how you sign it off, right? Thank you for your time. Feel free to give me a call at any time if there's anything I can help with. However, in the meantime, um, I might just send you on a little video on WhatsApp to show you some other work we have done and reviews we have got from our clients, okay? So we sign off the conversation with this statement in which we leave the conversation very pleasant, very helpful, and also with permission to send on some further social proof that they really should be going with your company. In this instance, you need to have a short video saved onto your WhatsApp that will showcase some of your work, but more importantly, you need to showcase your reviews. So go and screenshot your Google reviews of Facebook testimonials and include them on the end of your video. So go and screenshot your Google reviews or your Facebook testimonials and include them on the end of this video. What you, what you need to understand here is the only thing a client fears more than paying too much for a job is paying too little by going with the cheapest person, getting a bad job done, and then they need to redo the entire thing again. The number one thing that will put people's minds at ease is not how much you can assure them, but how many other people can assure them that you are the right person for the job. So include lots of testimonials and reviews in your video to send them. So it's a little video you have in your WhatsApp and you just send it to them at the end of the call and then they can review that in their own time. Maybe a two minute long video and you can bet your life that your competitors aren't doing that. That's a little part of uh, chapter two of the Tradesman Survival Guide and that particular chapter is called the Inquiry Book and it helps tradesmen and self-employed people avoid having their time wasted by clients. If you want to get a copy of your own tradesman survival guide you need to go to my website joedoyle.ie forward slash tsg you can pre-order it there um, and trust me this book is going to be on the dashboard of every tradesman's van in the country thank you for watching see you at the top